Hello everyone and welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions hydrology education videos. In today's video we're going to cover what stormwater aquifers are, what are the equations that govern the operations of stormwater aquifers, and what are some of the characteristics of the different kind of stormwater aquifers. We're going to cover all of that here. If you want more information on the different methods of hydrology that we find in the industry, you can download our ultimate hydrology guide which is in the description down below which gives you an overview of all the aspects of hydrology and calculations. So go ahead and download that there. Let's get into the topic today, which is stormwater aquifers. So aquifers are a body of sediment or rock that stores groundwater, and these can be divided into confined or unconfined aquifers, or typically the two categories when we're defining what an aquifer is. Groundwater can be sustainably, sustainably harvested for drinking water and usage. Overdrafting, pollution, and depletion are possible abuses of aquifer supply. So you can see on the diagram on the left, in these um, soil layers, in these rock layers, we do have water stored. And a lot of times drinking water is harvested from these layers. However, if we over harvest, overdraft, or allow pollution to seek into the soil, which can you know, dirty the water, which can cause it to be undrinkable, this will be an abuse of the supply of aquifers. So the water supply of aquifers, especially fresh water supply, is incredibly cl crucial to the water cycle and providing drinking water to organisms and humanity itself. Groundwater wells can access water supplies beneath the water table and above and above an impermeable layer. So you can see here we have a well, there's an impermeable layer, then we hit the water table where the aquifer is, and then there's impermeable rock beneath that, not allowing the water to go beneath it. So we penetrate the soil and allow the well to go into the aquifer. Obviously the aquifer fills up because the water cycle, right, it rains, it goes into the soil, and then finally down through these water tables um, and in between that impermeable rock layer. So what are the aquifer types? Well, we have confining aquifers, and they're contained by a confining layer of often clay or another type of soil. And then we have unconfined aquifers. And in unconfined aquifers, the top surface is the water table itself. And perch aquifers are smaller than unconfined aquifers uh, even there. So you can see here that the unconfined aquifer, the water table is at the surface, but in the confined, there's another layer of soil. There's another layer of clay in between. Um, in the confined aquifer, we have that entire layer of soil. And so the wells have to penetrate through that layer of soil in between the impermeable bedrock. So those are the two kinds of aquifers we typically find that we typically classify. Um, and they have different equations that govern how we can um, determine how much pumping quantity or the flow rate of water drawn comes from them. So on the left, we have confined aquifer. You can see here we have an equation Q equals 2 pi kf h minus h over the natural log of r naught divided by rw. And then we have unconfined aquifer here, which is going to calculate the flow rate of water drawn from the well in cubic feet per second. And that's pi k, which is a coefficient of permeability. Then we have the height two squared minus height one squared over the natural log of R2 divided by R1. And those factors are just the height of the water surface above the bottom of the aquifer at the perimeter of the well. H2 is the height of the water surface above the bottom of aquifer at distance R2 from well center line. R1 is the radius of water surface at perimeter of well i.e. the radius of the well itself, and R2 is the radius of water surface whose height is H2 above the bottom of the aquifer. So it says, find the rate of water drawn in an unconfined aquifer with the given variables. So we have the coefficient of permeability is 3.5 times 10 raised to the negative third. H1 is 10 feet, H2 is 30 feet, the radius of the well is 2 feet, and then R2 is 10 feet. So how would we go about solving this problem? Well, we would use the unconfined aquifer equation, which is Q equals pi times the coefficient, times h2 squared minus h1 squared over the natural log of r2 divided by r1. It's very important that we get the correct order of these variables in order to get uh, the correct answer. So q equals uh, 3.14159 or pi times 3 times 10 raised to the negative third. That was our coefficient of permeability in feet per second. Then we're multiplying that by 30 squared minus 10 squared, dividing that by the natural log of 10 over 2, and you get q equals 4.69 cubic feet per second of flow rate flow rate of water drawn from the well. So groundwater sources will continue to increase in use as surface water sections are depleted. So you'll notice that on a lot of the surface of the earth, fresh water sections are being depleted over time. So we're going to have to use, utilize and harvest the groundwater sources because that's where a lot of the fresh water supply is going to be contained. Remember, most of the surface water that we have is salt water. It's undrinkable to uh, humans and to most natural organisms. Permeability will affect how fast water will move through the rock layers in a given aquifer. Aquifers provide, oh, 
So let's discuss the uniqueness of aquifers themselves. So water flows too slow in aquifer layers to be classified as a river or stream where we have fast moving water. Permeability will affect how fast water will move through the rock layers in a given aquifer. Aquifers provide natural filtration for stormwater entering the deposit, helping improve water quality. So not only is that permeability constant governing how fast the water moves through the rock layers, but it's actually getting cleaned and filtered as it moves through those rock layers. The natural environment does a job of removing pollutants, removing toxins from the water as it reaches the well. Now, obviously, if we have excessive pollution uh, infiltrating into the ground, that's going to cause an issue. But in terms of natural environment, it does a good job of filtering it. And rock layers may include gravel, limestone, sandstone, sandstone, or a conglomerate of different soil layers. So what are the differences between aquifers and streams? There's quite a few differences between open water bodies and aquifers. Open water bodies have fast flowing channels. Aquifers have the ability to filter water due to the rock layers and the water having to seep through it. Aquifers can supply drinking water, while open bodies may contain salt water, such as oceans. And open water bodies often contain wildlife, such as fish and other animals. Aquifers can, but typically that's found in open water bodies. So that is a quick overview of aquifers. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment down below. We have tons of other videos covering other hydrology topics. It can be seen in that ultimate hydrology guide, which you can download. But if you look at our playlist, we have tons of uh, educational videos covering different hydrology topics. So go ahead and check those out there. Thank you so much for watching. Anyways, we will see you guys next time.